Hello and welcome to this short video in which I will explain the power of semantic retrieval augmented generation and where I also will discuss the limits of large language models and generative AI. So no doubt LLMs are great. We can use them for many different applications. We can accelerate certain developments, but they have their limits. And in this uh, video and with the help of a couple of demos, I will explain what I mean by that. So to start with a, a quick demo here, this is a system based on a semantic retrieval augmented generation, in short, semantic rack architecture. This is based on a uh, architecture which combines knowledge models and large language models and can be used as a question answering engine and retrieval engine for all kind of questions around sustainability and ESG. So for example, if I'm interested, let's say, in questions around water, uh, water pollution, I can ask that question. And I will get in return a quick answer. The answer already is real guided, so to speak, by a knowledge model about sustainability related questions. By that, the answer is, let's say, more on the topic. It avoids to a large degree hallucination. And it also um, gives you some uh, elements in the returned answer where you can look up, for instance, if you don't understand the acronyms or certain concepts and things like that, you can take a look at those concepts and learn from there. So this is then taken as an input for further retrieval of documents related to the answer. So this is a semantic based rack architecture. Uh, you get uh, even more documents which kind of broaden the scope. Also, you can go for uh, a document uh, collection, sub-collection, which is relevant to just one of the, let's say, um, paragraphs of the answer, like this one, um, where you get specifically answers centered around only that paragraph. And the final conclusion is, so to speak, the essence of what has been found all here and gives a final answer to the initial question. So we suggest to use that in various applications, like, for instance, help desk solutions. Um, and we believe it will bring a lot of value uh, to the customers and end users. And we also would like to emphasize here it's only possible to come up with a solution like that because it's a composite AI approach which is running under the hood. So it uses large language models on the one side and knowledge models on the other side. Why is that important? Let's take a closer look at uh, a, another use case. Let's say we would like to analyze a little bit further what European Central Bank just recently has published in regarding their um, work for 2024, 2025 around green transition. So for instance, you read here, those are the main goals. Those are the main activities in the years to come. And if you would like to analyze and understand, let's say one of those a little bit more in detail, you probably would like to know, okay, what risks are addressed here with this statement? So what's the essence of that really? And you could go um, to our risk um, recommender uh, that's based on our recommender workbench. And this risk recommender analyzes any text, any disclosure, any paragraph in a regulation, whatever you want. And it will come up um, with the corresponding tag. So what's in here is, yeah, physical risk, not explicitly mentioned, but it's found, yeah, climate, climate change. Well, you could say this is quite obvious. This is what each tagging 
mechanism each tagging service actually should do. True. And that's the reason we extended on that and have now introduced tagging plus. And tagging plus is exactly what I said before. It can analyze any given text, even short blurbs, and infer from there, for instance, risks. Yeah, it could be any, any other uh, kind of uh, topic. But in that case, we infer risks from a given um, disclosure. And now I'm loading the extension. So I load a configuration which allows me to generate a far more comprehensive um, tagging result. As you can see here, the system is able to understand this indicates that ECB is addressing also the risk of uh, critical infrastructure disruptions or uh, long-term risks, uh, injuries, even in climate overshoot. So this is obviously a far richer semantic footprint of this uh, short text. And by that, we can recommend even uh, corresponding activities of companies uh, which fall into this uh, policy, so to speak. Now let's go to ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT. So taking here this blurb once again, the increasing fiscal impact of climate change, etc. So I ask ChatGPT, okay, ECB has stated that which risks are addressed by this statement. So basically the same function as shown before with our recommender workbench and ChatGPT is starting to return the answer, including various risk types, physical risk, transition risk, etc., etc. Looks good. Looks like it makes sense. A lot of, let's say, different aspects uh, mentioned here. Well, and I could ask again, and ChatGPT will return a new answer. It's a variation it introduces completely other aspects it comes up every time you ask ChatGPT with a different answer now even impact on agricultural productivity and i could ask again a third time and it's very creative it produces tons of different risks virtually you end up with any of those which are potentially happening further down the road but the problem here is really, it's not deterministic. And when we talk about industries like financial industry, we would like to have a deterministic uh, result. Here, if I ask again, same result. And again, same result. So what do you think? Which industries are most affected by an overly creative artificial intelligence in place. In some cases, I totally agree. Being creative, generating and paraphrasing statements in various ways, that's good enough. That's fine. It's helpful. But in some industries, in some occasions and for some use cases, this is just not a solution. We need to be able to rely on an engine we can explain where we can look into it and where we can expect reliable answers. This also goes very much uh, in alignment with the EU AI Act. So uh, I would say several applications, they um, carry a lot of risks potentially if the answers or the results generated by the AI is not reliable enough. And here we go. This is exactly where regulated industries especially should keep an eye on. And we suggest to use LLMs, but always um, in combination with knowledge models, which can explicitly uh, be controlled, where people can look at and where the domain experts can um, yeah, keep an eye on. So yeah, that's my short video here about LLM uh, related applications, where the benefits are and where the limits are and why LLM and knowledge graphs put together make a lot of sense.
I hope this was interesting for you and hope to speak soon to you and see you. Bye bye. Thank you.